Leia here from LeiaFirstSide.com and in this video I will show you the IUPAC rules for naming branched alkanes. When naming branched alkanes you get to add in the prefix portion to the naming puzzle. Remember a branch is simply another carbon group on the molecule that doesn't flow with your straight chain. Here are a few rules that I like to use when naming branched alkanes. First identify your parent chain. This is the longest carbon chain that you can trace without lifting your highlighter. Next you want to number your chain so that your substituent gets the lowest number. Next you want to name your parent and substituents using the format introduced in the first video but adding the following details. You have to include a number for each substituent telling where it shows up on the parent chain. Use the prefix that identifies the number of carbons and then add the letters YL to show that it's a substituent. And last but not least, tell how many of each substituent you have. If you have a single substituent, you don't need a number because it is understood to be one. If you have more than one, include the prefix di for two, tri three, tetra four, and penta five. Let's start with this simple example. I like to mark up my chain as I put the puzzle pieces together because this way I know what I named and what I have yet to name. We highlight the longest carbon chain, which is our parent chain, a number from the side that gives me the lowest number for my substituent. I have the option of naming from the right, giving me one, two, and a substituent on three, or naming from the left, which gives me one, two, and a substituent at two. Since two is lower than three, I have to number from the left. This gives me a parent chain of four carbons and the first name of Butte. Only single bonds gives me a last name of Ain. For my substituent, I have one carbon on carbon number two. I use the number two since it's the second carbon on the parent chain, meth to show that it's a single carbon, and YL to show that it's a substituent. Putting the name together, this is my prefix, this is my first, ain is my last name, giving this molecule the name of 2-methylbutane. Now let's try adding a second group to this molecule. We'll approach it the same way. Highlight the parent chain and then number so that you have the lowest number for the substituents. One more time a number from the left for a total of four carbons. Four carbons gives me a first name of Butte, single bonds gives me a last name of Ain, and now I have two substituents both coming off of carbon two. Since the substituents are the same, they're both methyls, I write two comma two dimethyl. The reason I include two number twos is that both substituents are on number two, and the di tells me that there's two of the methyl group. You have to include both the numbers and the di. This way I know how many I have and exactly where each one shows up. Notice the way I structured the name of the substituent. You use a comma when you have a number followed by another number, and a dash when you have a number and a letter or a letter and a number. In this case, I have two comma two, and then the second two gets a dash to dimethyl. Putting the name together, I have two two dimethyl butane, and notice there is no space between the substituents and the parent chain, but rather it's all one word. Now let's look at an example that has two different substituents. I start by highlighting my parent chain, and then numbering from the side that gives me the lowest number for the first substituent I come across. This means if I start from the right, I get one, two, three for my first group, or if I start from the left, I get one, two. Since two is lower than three, I start counting from the left for a total of seven, giving me a first name of hept. Since I have only single bonds, I have ain, and that's my parent name, now let's look at the substituents. On carbon number two, I have a single carbon substituent. This is a two dash methyl. And on carbon number five, I have a two carbon substituent, which gives me the name five dash ethyl. With more than one substituent, you order them in alphabetical order. So we'll compare M to E. 
Since E comes before M, I get a final name of 5-ethyl-2-methyl-heptane. And now for a tricky example. At first glance, it appears that my parent chain only has 5 carbons. However, don't go by what appears to be the longest chain. Remember that carbon-to-carbon -carbon bonds can rotate, and so your chain can actually be slightly twisted. In fact, the longest carbon chain actually extends downwards for a total of 6 carbons. I've adapted the junction rule from physics to help you easily identify your longest carbon chain. Instead of counting 1, 2, 3, going this way, going that way, going that way, this can potentially take a long time. Instead, identify your junction or the one point that has multiple chains coming out of it and then simply identify your longest pieces. Notice that to the right I have 2, to the left I have 2, but going down I have 3. This tells me that my parent chain has to include the branch going down, and since I have two to the right and to the left, I can arbitrarily choose one for the longest carbon chain. Now that I've identified the longest carbon chain, I continue with the standard naming. Starting from the left, I have a total of six carbons for a first name of hex, single bonds gives me ane, and a two carbon substituent of carbon three gives me three ethyl. Putting the name together, I have 3-ethylhexane. Let's do one last tricky example by naming this molecule. Don't be fooled by the obvious, which appears to be a carbon chain of 6, when in fact I have a much longer carbon chain. Applying the junction rule, I have a branch here, 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 and here. But let's not get carried away. Let's only take the branches that are not obvious at first glance to be our longest carbon chains. And so the one tricky branch to look at is right here. To the right, I have two carbons. Counting upwards, I have three carbons. And counting to the left, I also have three carbons. I verify this with a highlighter trick, where I start highlighting at one end and make sure I can get all the way to the other end without having to lift my highlighter. And so we get a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons in my longest carbon chain. I have the option of numbering from the left, which gives me my first substituent at 2, or numbering from the top, which also gives me the first substituent at 2. So I have to number it one more step and see which one has more substituents for lower numbers. From the left, I have another substituent at 3. From the top, I don't have a substituent at 3, and so I have to count from the left. This is where the puzzle idea comes in handy. If you try to name this, as you see it, you are likely to make a mistake, but if you mark off each piece individually by naming that aspect of the puzzle, the entire thing will come together nicely. I have seven carbons giving me a first name of hept. I have only single bonds giving me ane. And now let's look at substituents. I have a methyl group on carbon 2, 3, and 6, and so I name this 2, 3, 6, trimethyl. I also have a two carbon substituent on number four, which gives me four ethyl, and that's it. Every piece of my molecule is marked and numbered, every puzzle piece is named, and now I put the puzzle together. Your substituents are named in alphabetical order, but we don't look at the prefix tri. Tri is just an identifier, but the actual letter to look at is M compared to E. Since E comes before M, you get a final name of 4-ethyl-2,3,6-trimethyl-heptane. In the next video, we'll look at how to name alkanes that have branches on their branches. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, download my ebook. 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry using the link below or visit layofersci.com slash orgo secrets. That's O-R-G-O secrets. For information regarding online tutoring, visit layofersci.com slash orgo tutor. That's O-R-G-O tutor. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and even share it with a friend or two. If you have any questions regarding this video, leave a comment below or contact me through my Facebook page 
at facebook.com forward slash Leofersai. There will be many related videos posted over the course of the semester, so go ahead and click the subscribe button to ensure that you don't miss out.